Welcome back. Now, the opening sequence of the James Bond movie Goldfinger, featuring a scantily clad actress with images projected on her body, is probably one of the most memorable in cinema history. Its creator, Robert Brownjohn, also designed the early Rolling Stones album covers. Now, the first retrospective of Brownjohn's work is opening at the Design Museum in London. Samir Ahmed reports. You may never have heard of Robert Brownjohn, but in the 1960s, if you played a record, bought a chocolate bar, or a book, or went to the pictures, the chances are you consumed his simple and powerful visual ideas. Graphic designer Robert Brownjohn, BJ to his friends, had three things going for him. Great talent, charisma, and being in the right place at the right time. Three guys that I consider cool cats. One is Miles Davis, who happened to be my godfather and a great friend of BJ's. Um, Keith Richards, who was also a great friend, which is why BJ did the Let It Bleed cover for the Rolling Stones, and BJ. The son of a British bus driver and a housewife, Brown John was born in New Jersey in 1925 and studied at the Chicago Institute of Design, where he was taught by the Bauhaus émigré Laszlo Moholy Nagy. When he hit New York in 1950, it was the start of the golden age of advertising, and Brown John applied the simple and striking visual ideas of Bauhaus theory to ad campaigns with dazzling success. He got into jazz, becoming friends with Miles Davis and Charlie Parker. He also got into heroin. And the show at the Design Museum captures the creative journey when he came to London in 1960 for the J. Walter Thompson Agency, though it was partly in search of treatment or at least a more liberal attitude to his addiction. And though London wasn't swinging yet, when it did, Brown John was at the heart of it all. Even lunch could turn into a happening. On the way, he kept on bumping into people. We ended up about 50 people towards the end of lunch. Oh my God. BJ said, so, you know, I've got this, this appointment with whoever it was, you know, I've, I've got to go buy Phillips and left, which meant I had to pick up the bill, which was about a year's salary, you know. The, 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 so it took me years to get over that one. So I was pretty careful in the future when I met, met him near lunch times. Brown John's great ideas kept coming, and his pitch to shoot the title sequence for the new James Bond film would bring him his greatest success. And he said, I put the slides in the, in the projector and turned it on. He said, and I took my shirt off. And about this time, he was, he, he's, uh, he was getting rather large, you know, because he actually used to be a very thin guy, and then he got rather large because he was drinking one day or another. So, and then he actually made the whole presentation by uh, gyrating in front of them with the slides on his not such beautiful body compared to the Golden Girl, you know. Uh, and sold it in that way. And for Goldfinger, he turned things around, projecting scenes from the film onto a gold-painted young starlet called Margaret Nolan. Goldfinger was, you know, the one that, I, you know, that still sends shivers down my spine when I see it. As a young girl, did it not feel a bit odd, things very sexy stuff going on? Or was that just... Oh, not at all, no. Well, you know, London in the 60s. <laughs> I mean, it was like that, you know, it was perfectly normal. By the late 60s, though he was still delivering great visuals, Brown John's personal life was unravelling fast. Only the heroin and the drink remained. And he died in 1970, aged just 44, with the decade he embodied. Main headline tonight is being confirmed. The lethal form of bird flu H5M1 has reached mainland Europe. We're back tomorrow at 7.30. Until then, from Bridget and from me, that's Channel 4 News. Have a very good evening.